Hi, I'm Dr. John Izzo, and welcome to the Purpose Revolution blog. Today, I'd like to talk to you about what we as leaders can learn from how countries dealt with the pandemic over the last year, what worked and what didn't work. Mark Carney, the former head of the Bank of England and the Bank of Canada, has written a beautiful new book called Values that I recommend highly, How to Build a World that Works for All. In his book, he talks about the different ways that leaders and nations dealt with the pandemic over the last year. And he summed it up in that some ha use the hammer and some use the dance. And the hammer and the dance, pretty self-explanatory. The hammer was these were the countries that kind of uh, swallowed the hard medicine, did the hard work, even if it was unpopular to basically get to zero COVID. These countries did things like, um, you know, have longer lockdowns. Uh, they uh, made decisions, even if they weren't popular, to close down places when there was a surge in the virus, had hard quarantines in hotels for people coming back to the country, even their own citizens and residents. And now countries that use the hammer, like Australia, New Zealand, and Taiwan, among others, are kind of living life next to normal. Then there were countries that basically used what he called the dance. And the dance was basically where you kept going back and forth between taking the tough medicine and making the hard decisions and doing what was popular or expedient or might give you short-term gain. A lockdown, loosen up, do this, but don't do this because it might be unpopular. Have quarantines, but not serious ones. And you can see the consequence in countries like Canada and the United States, where I live in those two countries, and places like India and Brazil. So basically, he says, in the end, the hammer won the day. Now, the other thing that he doesn't talk about that I think is equally important is a concept that uh, is critical to understanding leadership and human behavior, and that's the idea of delayed gratification. F. Scott Peck, in his wonderful uh, classic book, The Road Less Traveled, said that from his 30 years of psychotherapy, he discovered that the ability to delay gratification or what he called putting the pain first was critical to emotional and psychological well-being and happiness and success. In other words, those people willing to do the hard work first, even if it would gave them short-term pain for long-term gain, were simply the healthiest and most successful people. And many of you are familiar with the classic 1972 uh, study uh, at Stanford University called the Marshmallow Effect, in which they gave preschoolers uh, uh, a choice to have a marshmallow right now or to wait 10 minutes. If they could wait 10 minutes without eating it, they would get a second marshmallow as a reward. And then what they did was they followed those children over the next 30 years of their life to see whether the ability to delay gratification for something as, simply, as simple as a second marshmallow might predict people's happiness and success. And of course, as many of you know, it turned out that even 30 years later, those children who could delay gratification were more successful academically, were less frustrated, and more successful and happy generally in their lives. Now, I think the ability to delay gratification is critical for us as leaders. Those countries that were willing to delay the short-term gain but shut down harder were able to reap greater rewards later. And that's why here in Canada now, you know, uh, in Ontario, you can't even go to the golf course, while in Australia, my friends there are sitting in the theater together watching plays. Now, it's not quite that simple, but delayed gratification has an awful lot to do with it. And the interesting thing is that uh, again and again, we see the power of this in our lives and in our business. Now, there's an interesting twist on the marshmallow research, which is years later, a group of researchers uh, uh, did that study again with a twist. And that is they gave the preschoolers the opportunity to collaborate if they chose to with other preschoolers so that if they all could delay gratification, they would get an even greater reward. And it turns out that those preschoolers who chose to collaborate, remember they had a choice, 
were much more likely and able to delay gratification than those who tried to go it alone. In other words, when we felt feel responsible for other people's rewards and success, we simply are more able to put the pain first and, and do the hard work. And so it's not surprising, by the way, that those societies in the world that are most individualistic, most focused on individual freedoms versus collective success, also had a much more difficult time dealing with the pandemic. Now, there's a couple of really important lessons, three to be particular, uh, from all of this from the pandemic that I think are important to us as leaders. First of all, are you a hammer leader or a dance leader? Are you a leader who really is willing to delay gratification and put the pain first or not? What does that mean? It means, are you willing to stand up for the values of your company, even if it's hard? Are you willing to take a stand on a social issue, even if it isn't popular with some people? Are you willing to delay gratification by investing in some things that might bring short-term pain, but long-term gain? Uh, second, have you created an environment for teamwork and collaboration? In your company, in your organization, are people rewarded only for or primarily for individual success versus the success of the whole, of the whole team, of the whole organization? And second of all, are you collaborating with others uh, in your uh, industry and others in your country and the world to create a better society for all, knowing that in the short term, it may be in, not in your self-interest, but in the long term, by solving societal issues and creating a health, healthier society, uh, you're going to basically create a better situation for your business and for everyone else. And then finally, are you, as a leader, doing the hard work your, for yourself of delaying gratification? working on what you need to work on as a leader, working on the habits in your life, from your health and well-being to your productivity, that if you could do the hard work to conquer them, they would really pay great dividends later. Now, the final thing that I want to say about lessons from the pandemic is what we learned in this pandemic is really important to us as we think about the next crisis. And pretty much everyone is saying the climate crisis is the next big crisis to face humanity, probably not long after we solve this one, the COVID pandemic. And if you think about it, are we going to learn those lessons? The first lesson is, are we willing to put the pain first and do the difficult things now, though they may not be popular, and to make the case for that as leader, the hammer, not the dance? Are we willing to delay gratification now by, for example, spending money to help other countries solve the climate crisis who don't have the same resources as we do, helping to jumpstart technologies, even if we're not the only ones who get the advantage of them. Are we going to create an environment where we all will win if we succeed together? Uh, so a lot of important lessons for us as leaders going forward. And in the meantime, I recommend highly to you those two books, uh, Values by Mark Carney and then the classic, if you've never read it or haven't read it in some time now, F. Scott Peck, The Road Less Traveled. Meanwhile, stay positive, test negative, uh, and keep on leading.